Welcome to Tabletop.Ready, my name's Michael and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can paint gold armoured custodes. I'm going to show you step by step how you can paint gold armour, the warden's red cloth and the power blade including the lightning effect. I'll list the brushes and paints I use in this tutorial in the description below if you want to paint your custodes how I paint mine. If you enjoy my content make sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below what you think. It really helps get my videos out to new people and grow the channel which I would really appreciate. And make sure to follow me on Instagram where I post more tutorials and you can see what I'm working on for my next video and also what I'm working on in my own personal hobby. And you can share with me and others in the community what you're working on on the r slash tabletop ready subreddit. I love seeing all the amazing work you're all doing. For the purposes of this tutorial I've left some of the parts separate to show you how to paint them but it's perfectly okay to completely assemble your custode if you want to as it probably won't make much of a difference. I recommend using Retributor Gold Spray to undercoat your miniature to start with. It makes sense to use this spray seeing as the majority of the miniature is going to be gold and it's really going to help achieve the finish we're after. The gold colour you get from using the Retributor Armour Spray is different to the gold you get from the pot. So the first step is to paint the armour using Retributor Armour. We're also painting a layer of Retributor Armour first rather than working from the spray undercoat because it allows us to cover areas we may have missed with the spray. Once you're happy you have a nice solid base colour of Retributor Armour. We want to pick out all the decorative gold details with Liberated Gold to make the armour more interesting rather than leaving it all the same tone of gold. It's time to give the armour some definition and the easiest and best way to do this is with a wash. You want to make a wash mix in an equal amount of Reichland Flesh Shade with an equal amount of Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss. The non-gloss has a better coverage but will dull the gold down too much. Whereas the gloss will help keep the shine and get into the recesses easier but it doesn't sit on the flatter areas as well. So mixing them together gives us the best of both and creates a wash that is great for using on our gold armour. When you're applying any kind of wash you don't want to overdo it. You want enough to cover the miniature comfortably and this is going to help prevent the wash pulling up too much in areas we don't want it to. If you do find that happening then you can just use your brush to soak up any excess and then make sure to let the wash fully dry before moving on to the next step. The washer made has done a great job of giving us some definition helping to bring out all the ornate detail on the armour. Next we're going to use some liberated gold and all the more ornate decoration to help it really stand out against the armour. If we wanted to we could have layered the gold armour back up with the retributor armour as well. But I decided against this as the wash did a great job adding different tones to the gold and I would worry about overworking it when you don't really need to. Let's get the silver details done now before moving on to finishing the armour with some highlights. The silver details are first painted with some iron hand steel and then given a wash using Norn Oil. The last step of painting the armour is to highlight it using Stumho Silver and since we're going to be doing quite a bit of highlighting throughout this tutorial let me quickly go through the highlighting process. First of all it's a good idea to have a brush you can get a nice tip with. I like to keep a separate brush just for highlighting. I also don't tend to thin down the paint as much so I can get a strong colour without having to paint an edge multiple times like I would when painting a layer. It's also a good idea to remove any excess paint on some kitchen paper which is going to prevent thick blobby lines giving us more control when painting. You'll find that when highlighting the easiest thing to do is to start with the most prominent edges. For these you can use the side of the brush and run it along these edges to create the highlight. For the areas you can't do this, just take your time painting thin lines to bring out the less pronounced edges. With the highlights painted, you can see what massive difference they can make which makes the time and effort doing them really worth it. Now the armour is finished, it's time to start working on all the other details of the custode. I'm now going to show you the steps to getting all the other details on our custode painted starting with the gloves and small straps around the miniature. Start with some Rhinox Hide as your base colour, then give these areas a wash with some Norn Oil. And once that's dried, Squig Orange is used to paint the highlights. Let's get the red cloth painted now, which is probably the second most prominent detail after the gold armour, so let me go into a bit of detail painting it. 
Let's start by getting a nice solid red base colour which we can then shade and highlight and the red you want to use is Mephiston Red. Whenever you're painting it's always a good idea to thin your paints first and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. You want to keep your brush moving and try not to go over any areas you've already painted to prevent any texture whilst the paint is drying. It's also better to paint using multiple thin layers so you don't lose any detail. So make sure your previous layer is fully dry before repeating the process until you have that solid colour we're after. I always recommend starting with the colour you actually want that detail to be and this becomes your mid-tone. The idea is to then work downwards for your shading and then upwards for your highlights which for me is easier than going from darkest to lightest which may give you a different tone or finish to what you wanted to achieve. This is also the same way every metal approach painting their miniatures so it must be a good way to do it. To shade the cloth start by painting corn red into all the folds creating a soft shade first of all. Then finish the shading by applying some null oil into the more prominent recesses on the cloth. Try not to overdo this step though, less is more. To highlight the cloth we're going to paint a chunky highlight using Evilson Scarlet and all the raised areas. Next paint a fine highlight within the Evilson Scarlet using Squig Orange. The final highlight is going to be a spot highlight within Gore Flesh, emphasising some of the more prominent folds in the cloth. The red cloth is looking really good at the moment, but red can really be desaturated. So to enrich the red, we're going to create a glaze using one part Blood Angel's Red Contrast to six parts Lamy Medium. Don't treat this like a wash, just apply this how you would paint in a layer. The glaze has really helped and also knocked back the highlights making them look even better. Now we've got the red cloth looking amazing, I think we're ready to get the staff painted including the power blade. The staff weapons the custodies use are iconic and just as detailed as the armour, so let me show you step by step to getting them painted. Start by painting the staff using some Abad and Black, making sure not to paint over any of the gold and silver details we've already painted. Once you've finished doing that it's time to highlight it. Start with a chunky highlight using some Eshin Grey and then Dawnstone is used to paint the fine highlights. For the little hand grip bridges I recommend just going straight to a highlight of Squig Orange. It's time to work on the power blade including the lightning effect you see on the box. Start by painting a base colour using a bad and black. After that paint the blade of the weapon with some Cantor Blue. I would also like you to paint the edge of the blade with Sotec Green. Using Sotec Green again, you can paint in your lightning pattern. You can look at the box if you need some inspiration, but it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. Once you're happy with that, use some Pterodon Turquoise Contrast over the entire blade. This is going to turn what we painted into a kind of background glow, which we're going to build up from. You now want to use some Temple Guard Blue to paint your lightning pattern back in. Try not to completely go over the lines you've already painted to create a cool looking effect. Temple Guard Blue is also used to paint the edges of the blade. Continue to highlight the edges with some blue horror and you also want to paint little dots where your lightning joins up in places. Finally use some white scar to emphasise areas of the blade. There isn't much left to paint now, just the helmet details and all the gems around the armour. Let's get this custody finished now, starting with the helmet plume. Paint the plume with Mephiston Red first of all, and Squig Orange is used to pick out the detail, before finishing up with the highlight of Ungor Flesh. For the lenses, just use some Blood Angels Red Contrast, and paint a small dot of white scar in the top rear corner once that has dried. The last thing I want to show you is how to easily paint the gems you see all over the miniature. Start by painting all the gems with some Abad and Black. Next use some Sotec Green in the bottom right corner of the gem. Now use some Blue Horror to paint a thin line around the edge of each gem. Treat this like you would paint in a fine highlight. And the last thing to do is to paint a small dark white scar in the top left of each gem. The Custody is now finished and I hope I've been able to show you how you can go about painting yours. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, if you did please give the video a like and let me know in the comments. If you don't want to miss out on future tutorials make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.